we're going to switch up topics in this video and start to take a look at color in Photoshop. And that is a very important subject. So over the next several videos, we're going to review color. And a good place to start is the color picker. Now the color picker is probably the most widely used tool in Photoshop in terms of picking a color. So it makes sense to start out reviewing that. Now if you take a look down here on the left, this is where you can access the color picker. And you're going to see two colors here, one on top and one on the bottom. The one on top picks the foreground color. And you can see where that says foreground color right here. And if you click on the color below, that will give you the background color. So you can select the background color. And this arc arrow right here allows you to toggle them if you want to do so. I will tell you that the foreground color is going to be the primary color that you're going to use. That's going to cover about 95% of your needs. So we're going to actually just work with the foreground color because that is going to cover almost all of your needs. So you're going to use that for all of your paint brushes, all of your fills. And as I mentioned, the background color really isn't used a whole lot. I mainly use it for some of the special effects. Now, when you first come into the color picker tool, you're going to see three main areas. The color slider, which is located right here, and this allows you to pick the main color or hue so this is where you're going to start out first and we'll talk about this in a minute now once you pick your main color you're going to come over to the color field and this allows you to pick a shade of the main color that you selected over here in the color slider so this is the second area that you need to be concerned about and then there's a third area which are all of these values and basically these are arranged in terms of color models so the first color model is right here. And by the way, this is the most widely used model. So H is for hue, S is for saturation, and B is for brightness. And this is the one which we're gonna be working off in this lecture, and we'll talk about this in a few moments. The second model is RGB. So if you wanted to use RGB, you could use this to select your color. Now, if you see this pound sign right here, this is yet another model, and this is hexadecimal. Now, if you took my CSS for Beginners series, you will remember that I used hexadecimal when specifying the color on a web page. So if you're using this tool to pick a color for your website, you can use the hexadecimal for that purpose. Now there are two other color models that are here as well. These three values right here are called the lab model, and these four values right here are called the CMYK model. And we're going to talk about these in later lectures. These are not as widely used. So again, we'll talk about these in later videos. But the model we are going to talk about is this HSB model, because again, this is the most widely used model. And again, the H stands for hue, the S is for saturation and the B is for brightness. So when you first come into here, again, you want to use this color slider and pick your main color. And this actually relates to the hue. The hue values are actually based on degrees because actually this relates to the color circle. You might have seen that at one time. Well, I guess they couldn't fit the circle on here, so they condensed it into this slider. But this actually is based on a range from zero degrees to 360 degrees. So again, you want to think of that color wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to start sliding this up and you'll see the hue number increase so the lowest number is zero and that's actually for orange but if I go up here watch what happens see how that number goes all the way up to 360 well we're at 356 now but if we went to the very top that would be red so you can see how the hue changes as we adjust this slider so basically, let's say you have a favorite hue that you like. You want to go ahead and remember that number. So let's say you like this hue, this number 10 here, and it's sort of an orange shade. Then you could write this down and remember it. And that's kind of how I do it as well. So for instance, a big one is green. Pure green starts at 120 degrees. So let's go ahead and put that in. Now watch how the color slider will adjust when I put this in. Whoops, I put in 210, sorry. Let's go back and I'll put in 120. See how green comes up? So what you want to do is kind of remember these main hue numbers. And then you can just punch them in when you come back here. And I believe blue, pure blue is 240. So let's go ahead and punch that in. And there you can see, now we're at pure blue. Okay, so once you have your hue selected, then you want to come over to this color field. And here is where you pick the shade. And at first this looks a little daunting, but I'll tell you exactly how it works. So basically, if you go sideways, that controls the saturation, this value right here. If you go up and down, that controls the brightness. So that's the way you want to think of this. And as you can see, if we go higher, it gets lighter. If we go all the way to the bottom here, it's completely dark. So again, just remember, up and down controls the brightness, and from the sides, it controls saturation. So let's go ahead and click in here. And there you can see right away we've got 64 and 65. Now watch what happens when I move to the left here. Watch that saturation number. It's going to go down because as you move to the left, you actually start to lose saturation. As you move to the right, the saturation increases. But you'll notice that as I move the saturation to the left, it gets grayer. Watch this now. 
See how it's dropping and the color is getting grayer? Now watch what happens when I move right. The saturation is increasing. See that? It's almost at 100%. You're almost getting to pure blue. Now, if you wanted to get to the brightest blue, then we go up. See how the brightness now is increasing? If you went all the way to the top right corner here, and I can't quite get this at 100%. I probably could, but this is a tutorial, and I don't want to spend all day on this. But you can see, though, we have almost 98% saturation and 98% brightness. So this is almost pure blue. But again, as you go left, see how that saturation drops, and see how this shade of blue now is moving closer to gray? So that is basically how the color picker works. That's all you really need to know. It's actually very simple once you understand how these values work. So just remember once again, you're always going to pick your main hue first. You're always going to come here and pick your hue in the slider. Then you're going to come over to the color field and pick the shade and brightness of that color. Now I do want to point out that once you've done all of this work and selected this color that you want to use, you might want to go ahead and add it to your swatches. Or you can write down the values from the HSB model, or you can just take down the hexadecimal value as well. Now there's one final thing that I want to talk about, and that is what if you want to select a color from an existing photo. And as you probably know you use the eyedropper but how do you do that from the color picker well it's incredibly simple and we actually have to open up a photo for that so let's go ahead and close out of the color picker for now and I'll just go ahead and open up a photo really quickly here and I'll open up this photo of the penguins remember these guys so let's go ahead and reopen the color picker now if you move the cursor off of the color picker dialog box you get the eyedropper, see that? So what if you wanted some color out of here? So you just click it, and then look, the color shows up in the color picker. So that's very useful if you wanna quickly select a color from an existing photo. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video, thank you.